Lions Rock Productions. This is Jay this Moore. This is Greg Proops. This is Jordan Harbinger. This is Dexter from The Offspring. This is Nathan this is East. This Sebastian Younger. This is Rick Morata. This is Stuart Copeland. This is Mick Gillette. This is Andy Summers. Hey, this is Scott Baxter. This is Gabby Reese. This is Rob Bell. Hey, this is John Leon Guerrero. Hey, and this is Pete A. Turner. Hi, everybody. My name is Kevin Frazier. And this is Jeff Traeger. And you're hey. watching the Break It Down Show. Down show. And now, the Break It Down Show with John Leon Guerrero and Pete A. Turner. <laughs> you know, that's not an easy thing to pull off, and, and I'm going to give you guys uh, credit for having done it because we just came up with that idea seconds ago. Here's the rub. With this particular platform, StreamYard, they want you to start right at 5 o'clock and Facebook Live, all of the pressures to start right at 5 o'clock are there. You know, we're going to ease into this because we want to talk about what you guys have going on. Fraser Traeger presents and the shows that you have upcoming because you you guys have a slate of shows that's terrific coming up here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, some fantastic shows. Let's talk first about live music in the in the pandemic era. What uh, what you guys are doing is uh, well, tell us what you guys are doing. Jeff, do you want me to do you want me to start? Yeah, go ahead. I, I've talked many times. With, okay. Um, yeah. So what we're doing is we're trying to bring live stream entertainment in a concert venue to people because a lot of live stream that's going on right now um, is, you know, people in their homes and backyards and whatnot, um, somewhat lo-fi, um, great music, great musicians. Um, and some of, you know, I'm not saying it's bad quality. I'm just saying that it's not a concert experience. Um, so what we're trying to do is take that next level of performance, bring it to a concert stage and live stream it back to people in high definition, 4K, and make it also interactive where we've got chatting going on with the artists. Uh, we do a meet and greet at the end of the show. And that way is people can ask questions with the artist to feel like they're at the concert. So we're trying to make it a little more interactive, a little more high quality, like you're at a big show on stage. And we're going to be adding some other elements as we're moving forward with some social walls where you'll actually see yourself chatting to the band while the show's going on, things like that. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Uh, when you talk about making it a more interactive experience and what was missing, what what do you think that does for the performance? How how are performers responding? Because this is there's there are wrinkles in this situation, right? That things are new. Well, as far as performers go, I think for the most part they like it. COVID's the biggest issue. I mean, it's what we're all dealing with with the, with the pandemic right now, where there's issues. Are we safe? Are we going to be exposed to anything? So I think it's more concern on the level of safety than it is on the performance all musicians love performing whether it, you know it's for a bunch of people or a small crowd what they're finding though when they do these performances they're very intimate with each other um and so we just did roy rogers and carlos reyes and uh, man i mean some of the the tunes they did were so intimate and when carlo did his harp solo it was just like off the hook you know you were glued to it and also we're able to come in with the camera and, you know, you're seeing his fingers picking on the strings. You don't get that kind of close up experience when you're watching a show from a stage, but we're bringing you right onto the stage, right into his fingers, touching the, the, the instrument. So there's some coolness to it, but it still isn't live. You know, we all love the live experience. I'm a musician and the energy that comes from a crowd when you're playing live really can't be reproduced but yeah. given the new world we're in where we can't get together and we can't physically be there in that room we want to bring that next best thing and try and make it that concert experience we got to work with what we got so yeah that's really cool. yeah and so what you guys are doing when you're when you're streaming is it a live experience are we watching a live uh, experience or is there some editing uh, is there some amount of pre-production that happens and uh, that you're cutting in or uh, tell me how it works? No, so everything is live. The only show that wasn't 
live. Is what if I got Tommy off? Castro, we pre-recorded that show. Uh, and okay. We streamed it on the Sunday. Every show that we do is a live show. It's live streamed. All the production you're seeing where we're rolling in the titles of the songs. We get the song list from the artist before the artist start. We roll in the titling into our streaming software. So we are producing all of that on the fly while you're watching the show. And so there is a complete live interaction where you're seeing put a, a flat screen TV down like a monitor on stage and they can look down and see people chatting and do shout outs to people that are watching the show. Wow. That is pretty cool. It yeah. makes, makes for an interactive active experience. Uh, your slate of performers coming up. I'm going to, let me just put a link up here because you have uh, you have a calendar of events yep. that is pretty spectacular coming up starting yeah, this weekend. Actually, This weekend's the Bowena choir, um, which, you know, they've been to the white house five times, beautiful children's choir and great Christmas holiday show. Get the kids in their PJs, have some hot chocolate and just listen to the Bowena choir all night. So that's going to be a fantastic family show. And since everybody is hunkered down right now, it's, it's a great show to kind of ring in the holidays. And then we've got the Escobedo family. And the Escobedo family is bringing Sheila E. And Sheila has not played with the family in a very long time. You know, she's been super busy. She just did that Grammy show for Prince a few years ago. So she's kind of really blown up again. And so trying to get a hold of her has not been easy. Um, yeah, but she yeah. was going to be coming with that show and we're going to be doing kind of Latin Christmas stuff. So that'll be cool. Yeah, that will be awesome. And then, uh, uh, then we're doing, then we're doing a um, new year's Eve. We decided, eh, let's do a new year's Eve show. And we're doing Lenny Williams. Yeah. And we're going to try something really interesting. We're going to try something really interesting with Lenny's show. Um, and that is he's singing old things. and doing some holiday songs and plus all of his great R and B hit. But at midnight, we want Old Lang Syne to play for every time zone. So we're going to stream the show four times, one hour apart. So mm. we've already created the ticketing. So when you buy your ticket, you get an option to click on your time zone. And it takes you to, a, we have four separate live stream pages. And so I think that's going to be very hip. It might be kind of a first of its kind where it's four live streams going, you know, together. Yeah. Where you're picking which times of the show will start so that at midnight you're being serenaded to by Lenny Williams. You know, doing pretty that cool. is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I wanted to talk about Kevin and Jeff because they both have backgrounds in live performance promotion. And uh, those of you who are familiar with their work probably remember that Kevin uh, booked the Empress Theater in Vallejo in its comeback. And he booked a lot of great acts there. A lot of really strong performances. Uh, here comes Jeff. And uh, and the performances that he booked there ran the gamut from, I mean, there were all kinds of great shows there. Uh, the one that comes to mind for me is uh, Mindy A. Bear. Her band was spectacular, but there were plenty of shows there. Lloyd Gregory played there. Shucks a lot of people. And the Mick Gillette Band. We did Mick Gillette's very last interview before he passed was a new year's eve show and he talked to us just before the show and then of course jeff has been in the business for a long long time is responsible for a lot of the things that we heard in the bay area on the radio in the 60s 70s and beyond and then moving into live performance uh i was just saying jeff that you've been booking live performances you've been working at the uh this is by the way your Ah, must be third or fourth uh, appearance on the Break It Down show. So we appreciate seeing you every time. But uh, in terms of live performances, man, you were you were on a streak there. You were booking the Downtown Theater in Fairfield. You were booking Vino Godfather uh, over there on Mare Island, which is a great venue. What else uh, do you see yourself doing in partnership with Kevin? We do a lot of things together. I mean, you know, we, we both have a good background as far as knowing what groups, trying to find the right groups that resonate mm -hmm. with everybody. What's what's going to eyeballs? What's you know? What's current? What's good? It's 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 a, it's more about quality 
Yeah. So Jeff was just saying that you're, you know, you're really, your business is based around getting the right acts and putting the right acts in front of people who acts are going to resonate with local audiences. Was the approach that you were taking when you were booking the Empress the same? How did you guys line up anyway, you and Jeff? Well, Jeff and I were kind of working in the same market together. And Mm -hmm. so we kind of made a point to always check with each other and make sure he wasn't booking something that might clash with what, what I had coming. And we tried to kind of work weekends off each other. So if he had a big show, I'd try and do something local. And then I told him, oh, I got this big show. And he goes, okay, yeah, I'll hold off on bringing war because I'll do this instead. You know, so, so it's been great. So we really developed a working relationship, you know, over the years. And it was more like not stepping on each other's toes, um, but both kind of doing the same thing. I was booking the Empress. He was booking the downtown theater. He was booking some other venues around me. And uh, for the most part, it worked really well. And we had a great working relationship. When it was time for me to part ways with the Empress, it made sense for me to give him a call and say, why don't we do this together? It was like you guys were making music the whole time. (laughs) Exactly. We were doing the dance. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, Yeah. that's cool. So now that you have uh, Synergy working for you, how's it been? What what's it like to collaborate on bringing shows? What what do you bring to each other and and uh how does how is teamwork benefiting each of you i think it's our skill sets you know i'm definitely more the techie geeky dude kind of working on the back end getting our automated ticketing system the live stream page the av crew the stream jeff is the networker he's making the relationships with the artists getting the phone calls finding sponsors to sponsor some of the shows i'm gonna so he's uh, out there networking while i'm kind of doing pretty the back end crazy. okay tell you about the Tommy Castro show started it and 10 minutes into the show Comcast decides to shut off internet goes down and here I am streaming a live show yeah so I had to run find new signal and start streaming the show and I basically just was texting people saying we're going to restart the show it'll start at 6 30 and and we resurrected and got through it but technology man you're up against that sometimes it really yeah. can be frustrating because we're all dealing with it this is nothing new we've all gone through these technology bumps <laughs> sure sure it's yeah. different when the stakes are high though because you're bringing a live show and you know yes you're, and you've you're got talking hundreds about, of people watching right that, thousands. yeah i mean th- thousands of people but also the 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 performance environment i mean let's face it we have the ability you and I can sit here and shoot the breeze all day long. When you have a performance, you know, everybody gets, everybody gets, gets ready and prepares for the performance. And then when it's time for the, for the curtain to open, so to speak, you know, your energy level is where it is, all that stuff. And you account for technology when really what you should be accounting for, for mostly is, is performance. So yeah. yeah, hats off to you guys for doing what you're doing. What do you what do you see for the coming year? How many of these tech-based shows are you uh, are you planning and and what do you think happens next? Well, I, I think it's gonna be happening well into the, the next year now. I mean with with the virus uh, you know, with them coming up with um, the vaccines, they're talking about them getting here around April. Um, so that really pushes us into summer to even late summer before everyone's had it. Then we don't really know how much of the viability once everyone's had it, is it gone away or has it gone down? We don't really know what to expect yet. So I think there's going to be trepidation on a lot of people's parts to congregate in big form for a little while, you know? Um, and it's unfortunate too, because that that's, the whole goal is to go and get out there and put on some music festivals and get everybody together, having a good time, like like we all used to. And we're yeah. gonna get there. It, it's gonna come. Um, mm-hmm. So I think you know, short term, we are gonna be relying on this technology probably well into summer, and then hopefully by summer we'll start to see some of the live shows coming back. And with those live shows, I think there still may be a hybrid approach because there's still gonna be a lot of people that want to see that show that because this technology now is becoming so prevalent and so many companies are getting their, you know, systems in place to have these live shows, the big boys, you know, your Amazons and your, your, your large entities want to have 
these live stream music channels. They're building them out right now. Yeah, so, Spotify, Pandora. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. So instead of just having it be a music channel, now you'll actually be able to see your artists and interact with the artists. So if you, what I see happening in the future is a hybrid approach. We'll put on that festival, but we'll also be filming it in 4K for yeah. those that can't be there live, but still want to watch the concert. They'll pay a smaller fee than what they would pay if they were obviously live at the show, but it gives both sides the option to still see that great show. Yes. And I think we'll, I think we'll see more and more of that, that hybrid. And that's kind of what Jeff and I are set up for our ticketing system. We already built it to be a hybrid system. So it can do both ticketing and live stream. It can do free. It can do tipping. It can do donations. So, you know, you've got to keep it to where artists still need to be paid for their art. And that's, I think the biggest hurdle that most places are seeing out there is they're doing these Facebook shows. And they're doing mm -hmm. these YouTube shows, but monetizing them, YouTube's making money and, you know, Facebook's making yeah. money by ads and whatnot, but the artists still aren't really getting their due. You know, <laughs> every now and then I talk to some artists and, oh yeah, I did well on that show. I got a bunch of people together and, you know, people donated through their PayPal account, but it's hit and miss, you know? And so making it easy for people to do that, I think is important. And letting people know that it is important to support the arts, just like you would if you're going to get a latte at Starbucks, mm -hmm. you know, giving five bucks to that artist that you're sitting there watching matters a lot. It matters. It really, yeah. Yeah, it does matter. Are younger artists embracing the technology the same way? I mean, are they charging into videos and streaming? Hey, this is P.A. Turner from Lions Rock Productions. We create podcasts around here. And if you, your brand, or your company want to figure out how to do a podcast, just talk to me. I'll give you the advice on the right gear, the best plan, and show you how to take a podcast that makes sense for you, that's sustainable, that's scalable, and fun. Hit me up at Pete at BreakItDownShow.com. Let me help. I want to hear about it. Are younger artists embracing the technology the same way? I mean, are they charging into videos and streaming? In a different way. Yeah. What I'm seeing within the youth market, it's more personal. It really uh -huh. is. And they're really doing it kind of one to one to their market. They're not using even companies like us. You know, they're going direct to their their end users, their fan base. And it's shorter snippets. Songs are kind of more interlude and quick, but there's a lot more interaction with their audience and with their fan base. And they're very social, uh, much more social than even what we're doing with these live streams. So, and I think we're going to have to kind of morph towards that as, as they start moving into the mainstream, that these shows are going to have to incorporate more social interaction, uh, m more with your fans. We're doing a show with Fantastic Negrito, um, who's won two Grammys and he's a yeah. third, third Grammy this year. So he had just did a video with his fans off his latest album, Have You Lost Your Mind Yet? And he did a whole video of his song and he let all of his fans submit video clips of them grooving to his song, singing the lyrics to his song, playing instruments to his song or dancing and doing yoga, whatever. And yes. he, mixed the whole, he mixed the whole thing in. So you watch this video and it's actually up on our website as the, the promo video. When you buy your ticket before the live stream starts, you can watch this video of the video with his fans. Great video, great concept, how to incorporate your fan base into your own medium. And that's what I was telling you. What I want to do with the social walls is when you're watching a live concert, if you could see your not only just your chat, but you're also a little zoom head that's floating yeah. up on the back projection at the concert. And it shows your little chat message. Oh, I'd love this song, you know, whatever yours, you know, and that can be moderated. So you keep it, you know, safe and whatnot. But another way to get people like, wow, I, I rolled up on screen during that concert. That was amazing. You know? Yeah, uh, that it's that same experience that, you know, right. when you'd go to the show and somehow the camera would get pointed at you and you'd be like, yeah. I made it to the Diamond Vision. Right. On the sports, you know, when you're watching a football game or whatever, whenever yeah. you're on that camera, man, it's like, yeah, you know. You get fired up. You so rock a little what, harder. That's, yeah. that's what I want to bring to our live streams is, is get that kind of social interaction going. And I think that's going to it's going to be around. I mean, people are going to participate on that level. And especially the youth, I think mm -hmm. uh, they're much more technology based than we are. You know, they're yeah. they're using 
programs like Twitch. It started out as a gaming channel, but I know they're really trying to turn it into a music channel as well. And these are programs that not only run on your computer, but you can get them on your smart TV and go on to my son. He's sitting here watching these gaming guys on television. They're nice. playing their computer, but they're watching it on the smart TV. And you don't have to have an Amazon account or, a, you know, you're just boom, you pull it on your Roku and there's the Twitch channel and you click on it. You're watching a live gaming competition. Well, that's what I want to see with the music. Same thing is build out that music channel, the live stream music channel to where, boom, I want, I'm in the mood for some blues. Oh, there's a Roy Rogers show killer three ninety nine to rent it. I'm in, let's go, you know? Yeah. So make it accessible like that as well and build out channels that enable uh, people to find great concerts. It's all, it's all about having the, uh, the content and the great shows. And that's what Jeff and I are really trying to put together is, we got Sheila E coming. We got Fantastic Negrito coming. We got Confunction coming. And then we're working on some of these uh, YouTube sensations that are, you know, making hand over fist doing their YouTube channels. And huge, I mean, we're talking millions fan base, you know. Yeah. Uh, Confunction and, and Negrito, they have hundreds of thousands on their Facebook channels, but they're not nearly as socially rocking as some of these young 20 somethings that that's all they do is social so, you know so their social fan base is huge yeah and i saw that happen with um we did a comedy show with christina gambito and mm -hmm. she had this huge youtube following and she came and rented the theater and she's like yeah it's my first show and she was kind of nervous about it and you know i hope it does well and it's sold out in three days. I never sold a music show out in three days. <laughs> Boom, wow. come three days. Cause she had that huge base, that yeah. uh, internet base. So it does make a difference. Yeah, it does. It does. And it, and that internet base has made huge stars out of a lot of people. I mean, Russell Peters, yeah. you know, oh. internationally is, is enormous. And right. he, and he exploded on YouTube. Right. Kevin Hart exploded on YouTube. Bill Burr exploded on YouTube. So yeah. sure, those things can happen. And I, I think that what you guys are doing is great and that you're curating some uh, shows now and building on a, a library that, you know, I hope you guys do very, very well. One of the things that I would like to do because we had some technical difficulties is I'd really like to do these things. And instead of hanging out for an hour, we can do a half hour, but check in frequently with yeah. you and, and make sure that we're keeping the audience in touch with your progress and what you guys have coming up and making Absolutely. sure that as we, as we roll into these things and as your product is evolving, you know, that we're all staying up on, on who's working with you and, and where, um, you know, where you guys are headed and keep us all entertained because as we come out of the pandemic, you know, we're going to come back to live performances, but in the meantime, having the video stuff, I think a lot of this new normal is going to stick around. So yeah. I think we're going to be clamoring for live okay. and, ga and gathering. We uh, are live clamoring. And, well, we, we went into the COVID negative zone because we were clamoring so bad. Yeah. People, people came out before it was time and mm. didn't take the precautions they should have. And therefore we've backslid, but yeah. that's just showing you how much people are clamoring. They're dying to get out. They're dying to interact. We are social beings by nature. You know, we need this social interaction and seeing you on screen and me on screen is great. <laughs> But there's something about that physical interaction that can't be duplicated on the screen. Yeah, you can't happen. replace it. You can't replace no. it, especially no. not when it comes to music, because hearing, you know, a great performance from your TV, that can be terrific. Yeah. But hearing horns below and hearing, you know, hearing musicians interact live in the room, there's yeah. nothing that can replace that. No, it's also just the vibrations. It's the yeah. vibrations and the energy from the music hitting your body because mm -hmm. you're in this room and it's literally penetrating your body and you're feeling the vibrations of that music and the and common experience with everybody. And, the, and then you're feeling the energy from all the other people around you and yeah. just that buzz and you turn around and someone's going like this. And so like when you're watching a sporting event, why yeah. do you think everyone goes there? Because they feel the energy of the whole crowd going, yes. And when someone's cheering at the end of a song, 
that energy fills you up where you're in your living room, the song ends and you're going, yeah. you know, but, but that you don't get that same energy. So. Right. And then you don't get dressed up to sit in your living room either. That too. <laughs> yeah. So listen, let's, let's make this one a half hour. Okay. And, uh, and, and bounce out. And then what I'm going to do, because I, you know, sort of feel like the, the technology betrayed us tonight is a little bit. You know, yeah. I, I'm going to commit to you anything that anything that we can do, anything that I can do personally to, you know, help you guys bring the entertainment to the world. You just let me know and, and consider me recruited. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Well, maybe as we get close, the fantastic Negrito show is in uh, late January, January 23rd. And it's oh, yeah. literally it's the week before the Grammys and he's up for a Grammy. So it wow. might be cool to circle back right before that show and kind of touch base. And kind yeah, of let's make sure we do that. That'll be awesome. And then we'll be able to recap how the uh, multiple live stream of Lenny went. We'll we'll be able to talk about Sheila playing with the rest of the family. Hey, I'll tell you, I love every Escovito. There is an oh. Escovito that I don't love. No. So I'm happy to see them all together. And we'll see what, you know, what you're doing and how the mission has evolved. Because I, I suspect that even a month from now, you know, what you're thinking you're going to do is going to continue to change and Yep. And uh, you guys are nimble. So we are nimble and we got to be quick, baby. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Everybody, this is Kevin Frazier. He uh, can hey, be, you can reach the stuff, you can reach the stuff at ftpresents.com, see what the slate of shows looks like coming up, get involved, watch the shows, check them out. They're going to be cool. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks so much, John. Appreciate Terrific. it. Terrific. See you soon. All right. See you.